Well, good evening and welcome back to, of course, another impromptu live stream here on the Sergeant Tank YouTube channel. So want to thank you guys for stopping by. And anybody that's going to be watching this later on, I appreciate you just, yeah, showing some love and support. Uh, make sure that you guys are subscribed. Turn on those notification bells and make sure you hit that like button if you like this content. And definitely check out our website, which is linked in the description below. That's www.sergeanttank.com. We're oftentimes um, updating the website to show uh, different livestock and dry goods and so forth. And, of course, the Sergeant Tank swag, hand towels and stickers or decals, whatever you want to call them, as well as the email address, which is sergeant.tank at yahoo.com. So you can check all that out right in the description below. Uh, I do have some pretty cool livestock in the next two or three weeks that I'm going to be uh, obtaining um, through a reputable local hobbyist that's been around in the hobby for uh, quite some time so I'm excited to be able to offer some of those different specimens of fish over uh, on our website uh, but if you aren't a part of the Sergeant Tank Facebook group uh, definitely go ahead uh, send a request and myself or one of our uh, admins or moderators can go ahead and um, approve you guys to be a part of that so that's just Sergeant Tank you'll see our logo and everything pretty easy to find uh, also on Instagram, I'm not doing much right now on Instagram because I'm trying to really provide uh, the attentiveness that I want here to try to continue to grow uh, as we do in the community uh, here on the YouTube channel. And then secondary would be the other social media platform, uh, Facebook. So Instagram basically is a last priority at this stage. However, uh, it is a, another platform as well that you can also go ahead and send a request uh, through Instagram if you want to follow us over there. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get to the topic. Uh, give a few shout outs. Let's see who's in the chat. So uh, we got uh, KG Cichlids. How you doing, buddy? We got Gina Tucker. We got uh, Big Easy uh, DIY Aquarium. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, Premish. I, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, so I do apologize. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Go Tribe 22 win tonight. All right. So um, hopefully you guys can hear me, see me. Everything's working fine. Uh, let me know right now before we get too far into this because I do want to ensure that everything is coming through okay uh, for you guys. And, yeah, we got uh, Alcoholic Fish. Hello. Uh, let's see here. Right. Sounds great. Okay. Yeah, it's weird because it's going from like showing like six to one. So I'm not even going to pay attention right now to what YouTube is showing um, just because I'm not trusting it right now because I know that there's more obviously based on the chat. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we got Gary's Aquatics. Hello. We got uh, DPK Fish Aquariums. What's going on, dude? Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the topic. So being a successful fish keeper, what does that mean? Uh, that's like one of the number one questions I oftentimes have heard through the years of being in this hobby and breeding a lot of different various specimens of inverts and fish and so forth. And I think that would pretty fall, uh, pretty be close to falling right there in the same category as Jeremy, what do you recommend I put in a 10-gallon tank? Or what do you recommend I put in a 40 breeder? Or what do you recommend I put in a 29 or a 15 or a, you know, 75 or a 55 or a 60? You know, you guys get what I mean. I'm sure anybody that's been in the hobby long enough can definitely contest to that. And it's one of the most difficult things as a hobbyist for us to really answer because we don't know what somebody's interest is uh, based on not only their knowledge, um, you know, how much they're going to do maintenance, uh, the overall husbandry when it comes to keeping fish. Uh, that's why the whole basis, if you guys have been following this channel long enough, and I do need to do a trailer to the channel because I really think that will help draw in uh, some further traffic. Um, and I want to start putting more time. I really do want to put more time into editing and so forth of the videos. 
I have the capability and the technology to do it. It just comes down to strictly time and interest. It's not a great passion of mine to do, so I need to get into that mindset. So bear with me. Sometimes I know that there might be a little bit of, um, you know, audio issues or video issues. The main thing I want to be able to get across in every one of my videos, whether if it's here on the live stream or through an edited or even through maybe more of a raw video is education and inspiration. Uh, that's my number one goal, to be able to educate, be able to inspire and get other hobbyists or those individuals that specifically are dealing with uh, certain issues and aspects of their own life that they may be struggling with, whether if that's addiction, if that is dealing with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, if that's dealing with pain. Um, so again, a lot of that I can really sum up and be able to draw, I think, more traffic once I can do a good trailer. So I have some ideas in mind of doing a, a trailer, and I really think it's going to bring me to that place in my life that I used to enjoy doing. Um, I have oftentimes individuals say, you know, I, I sometimes when I'm in chat and, and so forth and I'm in other individuals, I, I get a little bit envious, I'm not going to lie. Um, to those folks who are able to go and um, get out in the wilderness and actually be able to hand pick and hand select a lot of their own um, aquascaping and uh, just scaping materials for their tanks. And one of my one of my passions was for a long time is um, I've been an avid hunter ever since I was a child. So I really spent a lot of time out in the woods. Uh, so I think something. This is to kind of give you a taste of what it would look like as far as a trailer for this channel would bring me back to the roots of being out in the woods and just being out in nature in general. And a lot of those times in the woods is what gave me inspiration. That's why you'll see sometimes over on Instagram or on the Facebook is if I take just a basic picture of something that I see that 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 brings me a little bit of inspiration um from god's wonderful beautiful creations that he's given to each and every one of us is the fact that let nature be your teacher so i always use that phrase because that for me is what really brought a lot of the uh aquascaping um initiatives i guess into my own setups within my own home aquaria so um being a successful fish keeper to me is simplifying the hobby to not overcomplicate it and i oftentimes hear what one is easier what one is more difficult when it comes to salt water and fresh water i honestly can't really contest much to the salt water aspect yes i have enough understanding of specific gravity and dealing with salinity there's a lot of that you kind of in a sense will incorporate into the fresh water um, aspect depending on certain breeding aspects and what you're keeping rather if that be brackish if you're trying to um, utilize that as a method in order to um, maybe hatch some of your fry uh, depending on what species of fish you might be breeding so there is certain aspects there that can relate however I don't have a great desire and passion into the marine aspect of this hobby I'm looking right off which you guys can't see here but right off to my right shoulder is I have a eight gallon, seven and a half gallon nano setup with two yellow tailed or yellow tailed damsels in that tank. And I used to have a little bit harder coral. Uh, I have the appropriate um, dosing uh, requirements that I need in order for that tank. Um, but I just didn't have an interest in it. So for me, um, saltwater marine is not my niche. It's not something I enjoy to do. I would much rather get my hands and dive into a aquascaping tank versus um, dealing with coral. It, I think it really comes down to personal preference. So I think the phrase sometimes can be a little bit difficult to distinguish uh, depending on what conversation and what the topic is and who you're specifically talking to at that point in time. Because if that question maybe might be asked to somebody who really is into marine or saltwater aquariums um, and maybe isn't so much into the freshwater aspect, you might hear uh, that individual say that saltwater, of course, is more difficult than freshwater. And I really have to say it really comes down to your due diligence as a hobbyist 
to understand and educate yourself enough depending on any tank that you're keeping. So hopefully that makes sense. So I wouldn't really say one is more difficult than the other. And I think a lot of that is just certain aspects in life in general. Uh, depends on how much time you want to put into something. Because if I'm only doing maintenance on my saltwater tank, let's say every two weeks, that's because I'm lacking in my husbandry for that tank. And let's say I'm doing uh, my due diligence of water changes, uh, my freshwater tanks, I could look at that and say, well, it's harder to do my freshwater tanks because if I lay out the time that I'm putting into those tanks, maybe that's harder versus the salt water. Um, I'm not sure why individuals always ask that question, which one's harder over the other. Um, I don't really think the hobby in general for 20 plus years now, being in the hobby and breeding consistently over 12 years, um, literally hundreds of different, I'm not saying individualized species, but literally thousands at this point of overall yield in production of various inverts and fish. Um, so to me, I don't have that sentimental attachment like I used to. So if I have a loss in the hobby, I don't take it that hard anymore. Um, and I'm just being completely honest with you. I don't have the same attachment because I've had my losses in the hobby. Um, not only loss of, uh, a pet that I would consider that I was really attached to, uh, but also many financial losses, uh, in the hobby. So let's get to the chat. This is kind of my take on it. Let me know what you guys think uh, right now here in the chat. Of course, anybody watching this later on, let me know in the comment section below what your take is on um, how you would consider yourself an overall successful fish keeper. So for me, the simple response is I'm able to adapt. I've always been an individual that's able to adapt. I think that's my upbringing, my background. Uh, working in retail 15 plus years, multi-billion dollar company, working in uh, as, a, um, as an investigator for a lot of years. So it was easier for me to adapt to certain roles and responsibilities. And I think maybe that's just my background. Might be easier for me that way um, to, to be able to adapt. And if that's adapting to maybe I need to make a change in the way I'm going about uh, keeping a certain species, um, you know, Hopefully that kind of makes some sense. Let's see here. Uh, KG uh, Cichlid said, knowing the nitrogen cycle and what not to do to your filtration, absolutely. And I would say that would be number one. We got Jenny Lee. Uh, in the house. How you doing, Jenny Lee? Um, uh, Alcoholic Fish is wondering what I used to edit. I uh, used to use Windows Live Movie Maker. There's two different variations of that. However, I use Filmora uh, now. Did I see glass boxes in the house? Uh, Joel was a mod, um, but that changed. Uh, because of the fact you changed your name. I don't know. Were you not a mod before, Joel? I'm pretty sure that you were. Um, but uh, maybe uh, I've been doing some little bit of revamping over there to try to clean things up. So, um, yeah. Uh, I need to make up several batches of Rapashi to eat. Not looking forward to it. Um, I'm looking forward to it, Kevin. Uh, Joel said, I'm struggling with uh, multiple tank syndrome. Uh, that would be, yeah, I think every one of us here can definitely, uh, um, if you're looking for support there, uh, you've come to the right place because we're only going to be advocates to continue to add to that, uh, that multiple tank syndrome. Uh, we got Jason Leo. Aloha. How you doing? Hello. Alcoholic Fish said, love uh, simplify. You got to keep it simple, stupid. Absolutely. 
Uh, Kevin said chasing pH can be fatal. Um, that's a good thing we can talk about here. Um, I don't mind talking about anything when it comes to water chemistry. That's one of my favorite desires and passions. Uh, really ties everything into the nitrogen cycle, I would say, at the end of the day. Um, but uh, if you guys want to hear my thoughts on pH, I'm more than happy to share that. Uh, getting footage on the uh, barometric pressure, I had to go outside to compare different pressures. Uh, Kevin is wondering how hard my water is. Uh, it's around 150. And that's parts per million. Let's see here. We got Dean H. in the house. What's going on, Dean? I'm going to go ahead and... I know Dean was having some issue there with uh, the interwebs. So let me uh, throw a wrench back on Dean here. Uh, let's see. All right. So we're good on mods. Uh, anybody that's joining, it's nothing on a personal basis. These have just been individuals that have been... Um, you know, if anybody's wondering, how do you become a moderator? Uh, just show the support, show up. Uh, once I get to know you well enough, uh, you know, all these individuals you see with wrenches have been longtime supporters of the channel. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I try not to get it too overwhelmed with mods, but those last two wrenches I just threw on there were already mods, but for some reason something happened here on the interwebs that uh, took those away. But anyway... Uh, so pH to me, um, we got Kang Lee in the house. How are you doing, Kang Lee? Uh, I mean, where do you start? Uh, you always hear that, are you a total dissolved solids? Are you a pH? I'm an everything guy. Um, what I mean by that is I am what my fish enjoy to be in. So it, it plays hand in hand. You'll oftentimes hear me use the phrase, I make my fish adapt to my water parameters, which I do. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer depending on what species of fish I'm keeping. For instance, my discus off to the right of me, which are probably a $500 pair of um, higher grade discus, uh, and had to recondition them, I'm keeping them in certain water parameters that you typically would say the uh, average individual has been keeping discus for a million years would say that's not possible. It is possible because I'm looking at it and they're thriving. <laughs> so who makes up if it's possible or not? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'm all about pushing the envelope at the end of the day. Um, I've kept, I don't actually find that discus are finicky at all when it comes to shipping. Yes. When it comes to keeping, no, um, I would actually say I've had way more issues with my, uh, certain species of like, uh, South and Central American cichlids, like my severums or my hybridized blood parrots. Um, I haven't really had a treat. The only thing I had to deal with, with the discus, uh, when I obtained them is getting them to trans can form over to my water parameters to adapt to my water parameters because the water parameters that they're kept in was completely different you know a lot of parasitic issues and so forth so um again that's where um that ad adapting takes place uh but uh yeah i mean i'm more than happy to uh, you know uh, there's only so much you can do uh, that's the one downfall when it comes to social media is I put out a video or somebody else puts out a video and they're scratching their head and they're like thinking to themselves, how are you doing that? How is that possible? Um, does it really matter how I'm doing it? Uh, you know, <laughs> just know that I'm doing it. Um, you know, I'm not going to intentionally do anything that's going to obviously harm uh, my fish. But again, adapting is a understanding of keeping fish and understanding their habits and their behaviors because i always go back on that line that i share time and time again is stop mimicking 
what is in nature when these are captive bred species. Most of the fish that we obtain now are either through lo local hobbyists, they're in their own home aquaria, where you would quote unquote see TR, which is tank raised, or WC, which would be wild caught. So these are not wild caught species that I'm keeping. I don't have any wild caught species. These are all um, uh, reproduction of other generations uh, that have actually been bred within captivity. It's no different as a human. If you throw somebody in a different climate you know, with a major change, there's going to be some issues. So again, how do you adapt? You have to kind of start looking at that. That's the easiest way I can say how I've been able to keep some of these things alive um, is I look at it from a human perspective. How could I do it? Even though obviously there's major differences, um, but to try to make it the most simplistic way that I can, that's the easiest way I can explain it. And it has been worked successful for me for a lot of years. So um, I don't know. But at the end of the day, simplicity is key. Don't overcomplicate it. Oh, let's see here. Uh, we got down the wormhole. How you doing, D? Uh, bulletproof discus from Discus Hans, Kevin said. Yep. Uh, I think pH affects more in lower oxygen levels, but I could be wrong. I've been reading a lot on it, and it's very tricky. So many variables in it. Exactly, Carlos. That's the thing is um, I will dive more into that maybe in a video or something like that because I really think putting certain things in perspective and just having real-life hands-on experiences uh, versus just reading something. That's why I'm not a big person on reading. Um, I'm, I'm more about doing, um, I'm a doer. That's the thing. I've always been one to take the initiative is practicality and common sense goes a long way in life. And, uh, one of the biggest pet peeves that I have, especially having four children myself, um, but just growing up my entire life, being around younger siblings and so forth is that can be a little bit challenging for me. Um, just because i been in the <laughs> I just grew up a lot quicker I guess you would say the most but with that being said it, it just kind of a pet peeve to mine is you know for instance when my own child or children are saying well I'm trying it's like that's the problem stop trying and just do hopefully that makes sense so I think a lot of times when we are constantly trying and trying and trying and trying you're going to overcomplicate it. You're going to start second guessing yourself rather than just simply doing. Uh, so for me, I'm a doer um, and I will accomplish it one way or another. And sometimes that accomplishment can come in the sense of failure first. So I think sometimes failure is a key to success. Uh, again, as long as we're not intentionally doing something we know that's going to harm, um, you know, our, our fish or our plants or whatever it is. I always have to throw in that little disclaimer there, but uh, I think you guys are tracking with me. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, KG said, when discus are bred in captivity, they become stronger, in my opinion, able to adapt better in different water conditions. Yeah, I think that goes with most fish. I think that goes with just about anything. Um, let's see here. Uh, Carlos said, opinion generation you breed, it gets hardier. In a sense, it can, um, depending on, I think that's a yes and no, uh, fair assessment. In my experience, it really comes on good genetic lines. So if you're not doing specific line breeding where you're actually pulling out the best genetic lines, um, then I think it really can, um, play at, uh, more of a fault, um, or, a negative rather than a positive outcome um, but because uh, I know for breeding specifically shrimp for over 12 years um, you know in in same thing like uh, uh, certain species of placos and and so forth like that I mean I think it really comes down to obtaining from the get-go a good genetic line and then pulling out 
um, the right genetics, and then you know going from there. But yeah. Uh, KG said, if I slowly move above sea level, I can adapt. Laugh out loud. Uh, DPK, three things to avoid. Stress, drastic changes, and rushing things with fish. Mm -hmm. um, albinos are hardier to maintain in guppies. Or albinos are harder to maintain in guppies. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think that's a great point there. Um, DPK is the fact if anytime you're rushing, we've talked about this before on the channel, and I've done videos on this, um, is the acclimation process. So if I, I think where issues come in, and I'm just telling you firsthand experience, if you have something, for instance, uh, a pH, and you're trying to transition it over to more of an alkalinity or more of an acidic uh, environment is to not do it too quickly. Um, you're going to want to slowly do it over a few week time frame. Don't rush it. And the same thing is with the acclimation sometimes of certain plants is you may have to, if they're coming from, let's say, softer waters and you want to transition them to harder waters or vice versa, um, I typically do it over a, a few week time frame, sometimes a few months, as I will slowly transition them because each one of my tanks, um, although they are similar, I do have different water parameters set depending on what species of fish I'm breeding and the overall husbandry and how I do water changes and so forth in each one of those tanks. Um, yeah, stress can be a killer, absolutely. See. So I'm just curious, um, just by a number for those who are here in chat. How many years consistently, um, not that you've gotten back into it, but consistently, um, have you been in this hobby? I'm just curious. Because um, the answer for me it would be 12, 12 plus years. So we'll just say a 12. I'm just curious if, for you all, like how many years consistent um, you've been in the hobby? And the other question to that is, do you guys breed? Because some people may not be at that point in the hobby where they're actually breeding. Um, or maybe they're just getting their feet wet and just trying things out. Oh, Carlos says, six years, still learning. Uh, Kevin said six years going back to most fish are hardier when bred in captivity. The strain can be weaker as well, depending on how long you keep them together. Mm -hmm. It's always, it's always a good idea to find another genetic line similar to what you're keeping and, um, start breeding, uh, those together. So if I went to John Doe over here. 10 years ago or five years ago and now he's still breeding a certain similar line is I'm going to purchase from John Doe that line of cherry shrimp let's say or whatever it is and now I'm going to introduce that into my lines of cherry shrimp um, that's how you really develop really good lines of shrimp uh, that's another way to go about um, line breeding shrimp uh, so, again, I'm not saying you wait 10 years to do that, but, uh, yeah. Uh, Gina said eight, breeding two. 
I encourage anybody that's been in the hobby uh, for a year, um, I would recommend for me, I always like to put time frames on things, even though some people work and educate themselves faster than others. I'm just telling you from personal experience um, is I would say be in this hobby consistently for a minimum of one year before you start to breed. So I don't want to discourage anybody, but the reason I put a one-year time frame is that's going to tell you if consistent where you haven't hit multiple tank syndrome and you're working with 50, 100 different tanks, let's say you might have one, two, three different display tanks that you're housing, whether if it's guppies, cichlids, uh, you know, you name it, inverts, whatever it might be, is I really feel at the end of that 12 months, you're going to know if it's the right hobby for you. Is if you already get discouraged, if you're, because that will give you enough time within that year to experience some loss, because you are going to have loss, I can guarantee it, um, is I think that's the most difficult thing for most hobbyists if they're getting back into the hobby or if they're new to the hobby is where they haven't experienced loss and they really start beating themselves up at the end of the day thinking, man, I just did something horrible. That's called life. Um, not to try to sound insensitive, it's called learning. Um, understand, do your research, know obviously the basics, common sense, know what you're getting before you get it. I mean, I would hope somebody would do their due diligence and, and do some form of research, um, no matter what pet you're keeping, to understand it. And it really comes down to life. I mean, you can watch myself, you can watch any one of these individuals in here that are putting out. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing videos, how long you've been in the hobby. Um, you can share all the knowledge you want to, but until you, in all practicality, put your own two hands on whatever you're keeping, you're, gonna, you're not going to know if it's going to be successful or if it's going to be the right thing for you or not at the end of the day. So, and I don't know. That, this is my little life pep talk there, but uh, that's kind of my recommendation. Be in it for a year, and then I would slowly get into uh, looking at. That will give you enough time to get familiar with line. Do you? They'll give you enough time to understand nitrogen cycle. Give you enough time to do your research, figure out what you want to keep, develop your repertoire of tanks, get enough beneficial bacteria built up in that time to help jumpstart other systems. So that's just kind of my, my rule of thumb. And then after that 12 month time frame, then you can start slowly um, developing what other setups you want to, to start looking at breeding. So I don't know. I think individuals uh, rush it way too quickly. Uh, let's see here. <sighs> DPK said, I agree, Jeremy. Waited two years to get into breeding. Uh, KG said, I only count how long I've been in the hobby when I'm actually focused on it. Oh, we got Ruru too. How you doing? Uh, only started breeding fish in the last few months. Uh, just because I wanted to learn the fish and breeding first behavior, their temperament, and how long uh, will breed with the same pair. Uh, there was no research when I started all trial and error here. Uh, D from down the wormhole. Yep. Absolutely. Um, but I know uh, D's been around in the hobby for a long, long time. So I think a lot of us, most of us, I know myself included, um, started out that same way. I uh, didn't do a lot of research, didn't have all this technology to, you know, watching videos and everything uh wasn't part of a club at that time but um that's why i just try to share to you know just be real with other people uh, let's see many fish deaths in the beginning few months kg said yeah yeah a lot of great feedback um keep that going um what was the other question? Oh, you guys already answered it. Um, I like to get open dialogue going so we can get the chat. I like to keep things moving along. I think it was the fish uh, dictionary, this information. That was amazing. Uh, that was from down the wormhole, yep. But 
Uh, trying to think here. Uh, so if you guys aren't aware, um, if you guys, I am in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. I think it's pretty evident at this point. Anybody um, that's been following this channel long enough, uh, I will add a link here in the description after this is done. And then a little bit closer to that time, I'll be putting that on Sergeant Tank and sharing. Uh, I know it's already been out there in some Facebook groups. However, Corey McElroy from Aquarium Co-op will be uh, at the Grand Valley Aquarium Club and uh, would love to have uh, new individuals show up. Of course, I'll be there. It's only just a few minutes from my home. Um, so it's a great, great club. And he's going to be going over um, talking about puffer fish, which is uh, a pretty cool topic to discuss. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, if you guys are in or around kind of that uh, Michigan area and you want to travel and uh, of course Jordy you guys here and anybody going back and watching this is going to be familiar with aquarium co-op so and if you're not go check them out um but yeah I want to say is that like what is Corey at it's got to be close to 90,000 I think now I told him, I told Corey not too long ago, I said, Corey, you're going to hit 100,000 by the end of 2017. So we're going to see if I'm right. I think he's going to be over that. I would have to check out the analytics again, but uh, definitely much love to Corey and Jimmy and all the staff there at Aquarium Co-op. Uh, so definitely myself, I've been a long time um, follower and supporter and so forth, as most of you guys have. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, uh, it's going to be a great time. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we got Melissa Bell. How you doing, Melissa? Let's see. Uh, one thing I learned is to learn your seasonal water chemistry and its changes that can come out from tap. Yep. Uh, KG said, two and a half years strong with the same frontosa. That's awesome. Uh, down the worm, uh, wormhole said, city water is much more unpredictable than country water. Yep. Uh, that's why I always recommend you guys look at your municipal water report. It's going to show you something, but you're never really going to know unless you're actually checking. And I used to do that. Um, I do have a API master test kit. I prefer that method over just because I have so many tanks and have for a lot of years now. It's way more cost effective for me as long as you know what you're doing and you measure it out to the five mil like you should be and mixing everything up. Yes, it is more time consuming. However, I would rather spend a little bit more time than cost. But, of course, you can use the, uh, the Tetra 6 and one test strips if you want to. But I used to test and compare uh, having the appropriate pH and TDS meters and so forth can go a long way as well to help you kind of uh, distinguish and get a baseline of what's going on. Uh, but it's always a good idea to do spot checks. You know, I frequently do that, uh, especially with a lot of the setups I have now. Um, some of the stuff really can't handle taking drastic changes in water parameters. But, you know, if something did catastrophic happen, and I know that's happened to other hobbyists, you would have to be able to prove that it was from the city. And, of course, you would have, you know, as long as you could prove in the unfortunate event, um, you know, there's certain things you can do, obviously, to go after the city. I mean, you are opening up a can of worms there um, by doing that. Uh, you know, it's I'm fortunate enough, you know, I don't, I try not to take it for granted, but we're in a city where I don't have to be too concerned about that. Uh, however, you do hear uh, some negative stories out there where certain things have happened. So, I mean, we can't walk on eggshells. You know, I know for me, uh, if something does, that's why I run everything individual now. I don't have anything on a centralized filtration system. Uh, so, typically, my methods and the way I go about doing water changes and manual maintenance, I'm going to be able to catch it a little bit faster rather than having it uh, more automated uh, versus the tanks behind me are obviously automated on a continuous drip system. Uh, but yeah, so all my breeding setups, um, you know, 
not being automated, uh, I guess you would say, the majority of them. Uh, KG, I think those strips should be <laughs> cheaper. Uh, Valley Fish, how you doing? Uh, DPK, I agree. Down the wormhole, country water, uh, if they use the icing salt, it will seep groundwater around the season. Uh, Jason Leo, how you doing, Jason? Uh, KG is wondering what is the pH out of the tap? It is almost identical to Lake Malawi, uh, so right around 7.5, 7.6. So for African cichlids, it's ideal but i can breed and keep most of anything in that ph uh i used to spend a lot of years and a lot of time doing the whole ro thing um, yes, it can make your life easier. Don't get me wrong. Uh, however, um, I'm not about making my life easy. I'm trying to make other people's lives easy at this point. So that was one of my focuses of starting a channel um, is to simplify it for other individuals. So when you guys purchase livestock from us, uh, nothing but healthy is our number one goal to ensure that it's able to adapt to the majority of the folks here in the U.S. Uh, a lot easier than something if I was utilizing RO water or keeping something, let's say, in a more acidic environment. Um, and now somebody has something that's hardy. I want to be able to provide diversity to other folks, if that makes sense. I want to be able to provide other livestock that might be a little bit difficult for other folks in the U.S. to come by um, because of the water parameters. So that is a main focus and goal to mine, which I have had a lot of success with through the years, is adapting certain species of fish you wouldn't think you could keep in those water conditions um, to be able to adapt. So a lot of that is why I breed. I don't do any import um, at this point in the game. I, anything you buy from us uh, at this point that's on the website is stuff I personally breed. Uh, so um, you're, I'm raising it and transitioning it uh, over to certain water conditions that I want them to be. Uh, that's the easiest way I can say uh, I found success through the years. Uh, Michael Ransom, what's up from Ohio? How you doing, Michael? I appreciate you stopping in. Uh, Mark said, I use all uh, RO water. Usually plants and ghost shrimp are great first alert, in my opinion. And then to me, reverse osmosis water is really anything. Um, I don't want to see much of more than a 10, 12 ppm parts per million of any uh, total dissolved solids with an RO. Uh, if it goes beyond even 10 to me, it's pushing it. I don't really consider that RO. Um, true RO of reverse osmosis, deionization. De uh, which is ran through the appropriate micron filters and change appropriately. If I check it with my TDS meter, uh, which I will uh, before I obtain TDS because I don't have an RO unit on hand, it's cheaper for me at this game to go ahead and obtain it through my local LFS rather than me dealing with the micron filters and so forth. I will eventually get one, just not in this home. Once we move and get that fish bar and so forth, I definitely will have an RO unit. But... Um, with that being said, uh, most of the time uh, I will not obtain it if it's anything over two. Um, I would rather just 
yeah, I'll go get distilled water or something like that because the natural minerals and so forth, I'm not going to remineralize it because I'm already having minerals that I need, um, the appropriate minerals and content and so forth in the water chemistry based on the setup that I'm keeping. Uh, so I'm not adding 100% RO to something. Now, if you're trying to grow out, um, like even like your mycogeophagus, like your germ blue ram fry, maybe even discus fry, um, some killifish fry, the eggs or so forth. I mean, I've heard individual, you can use RL, put a little bit of methylene blue or something like that in there. Um, but I mean, yeah, so there's a lot of things that you can do that you can try out. But uh, Dean is wondering, how is the family? We're all pressing in, Dean. I appreciate it very much. Uh, been definitely busy now with the kids being back to school, but one day at a time for sure. I hope that you and your family is doing well. Uh, Mark said minus six. That's not bad, Mark. That's that's reasonable. Uh, I got Cardinals, Rams, Peepoffers, Angels, Royal Plecos, Gold Nugget, Clown Loaches, Clown Plecos, Guppies, Cherry Shrimp, Cory Cats, Autosynclus, Calvis, Common Pleco, Black Neons. I'm missing some, I think, laugh out loud besides the obvious front toe. So, yeah. We got Majestic Animals. How you doing, Tim? Long time no see you, buddy. How's everyone tonight? Hello, Jeremy. Good to see you, bro. You as well. Um, Michael Ransom is wondering, what is my site? It is www.sergeanttank.com. Uh, there's a link right in the description below. You can get there from there as well. Um, and there is still a link on my main homepage of this YouTube channel. Um right in the far right corner of the banner. So uh, I will eventually end up taking that down um, because YouTube does not like anything that's outside of YouTube. Uh, so anything that you're trying to draw traffic away from, uh, that's why I've taken down like the Facebook. Um, so any added social media, I think once you get to a certain level on YouTube, uh, it's not going to matter as much. Um, once you've kind of proven and validated yourself uh, enough. So uh, this channel is very, very small, slow growing. Um, yeah, with larger channels out there, um, I think you can get away with some of that stuff a little bit, a little bit. Um, I've even thought about taking away on some of my videos, um, the add a link. That's actually why I wasn't... Uh, adding any end screens and end cards associated with a website because even before understanding more about YouTube in the overall algorithm and how YouTube looks at things and so forth, I wasn't doing end screens and so forth. Uh, and I've had it kind of come up on a few different occasions of why I wasn't kind of associating that to the website. So I went ahead and started doing it. But uh, I think sometimes that can be a, a negative, um, you know, where YouTube doesn't really care for that too much. Uh, Kevin said you need hundreds more people watching you, Jeremy. You have great knowledge. Well, yeah, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. Um, I'm just here to share my love of the hobby. Um, you know, that's the only thing that can semi put a smile on my face at the end of the day. Um, so, yeah. Um, but uh, that's why you don't see, I think, a lot of traffic you see on a lot of uh, channels and so forth is that upbeat personality. Uh, if you guys would have seen me seven years ago before I had my disabilities and so forth and dealing with chronic pain and depression and all of that jazz, um, then, uh, yeah, I have way more upbeat personality. Very, very outgoing. Um, 
energy level was uh, way, way higher than what it is now. Um, but, uh, yeah. So um, I just – I'm not going to ever fake it to you guys. I just – Ultimately, I'm going to be me at the end of the day and real uh, with everybody. I mean, that to me is nothing but transparency and just being human. Um, yeah, I don't like to put on a false facade. I, I did that for too many years. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, we got Priscilla in the house. What's with all live streams today? Must be uh, the weather. Uh, I know what puts a smile on your face. Me eating more Apache. Yeah, that would, Kevin. Goofy stuff like that, I get a kick out of it. You guys crack me up. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tim said, or Majestic Animals, uh, been busy, got my 180 set up finally in place and filled up, been working hard on the fish room. That's awesome. I did see a video uh, that you just put out. Um, I don't watch a ton of... Um, I don't watch a ton of YouTube stuff at this point. Um, you know, uh, being a stay-at-home dad, I mean, um, pretty well, I've been that way for over six years now since my disability. But, um, yeah, uh, things are definitely uh, uh, hectic for sure. Um, I have to laugh sometimes when I hear people say that they're busy, and I'm thinking to myself, really? <laughs> that doesn't seem busy, but... Yeah, I don't. I don't put my 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 problems or my issues out on social media. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, my aquarium has also helped me with my attitude and depression since my head injury. Thanks for being open about it, Brent. Quick, well, thank you so much, Brent. Absolutely, you can always check out. I've done plenty of videos. Um, we've had plenty of smiles, laughs, and tears right here on this channel. Uh, I got no shame in my game. That's for sure. Um, I've shed plenty. I've probably all cried out at this point in my life. I ah, completely cried out, but yeah. Um, thanks for watching, Jeremy. I uh, consider that an honor since you don't have time to watch much. Uh, I've been meaning to catch up with you. Summer got crazy for me. Yeah, it's just it's been a busy time, I think, for a lot of folks, for sure. Lots and lots of folks. Um, I won't like it, but Jeremy needs a good laugh. I'm not just saying that. We should set up a video challenge called Make Sergeant Tank Laugh. <laughs> uh, don't do it for me, Kevin. Don't do it for me. You already you already did your bit that you needed to do. That that I got a kick out of enough. Just use that use that Rapashi. Um you know what I you know what I really get a kick out of Kevin is the fact in my mind right now is that you know as well as I do that that food that you're talking about is not good enough for your fish that you have to eat it. Is that what you're trying to convey? <laughs> uh, there's a good fight in the background, Priscilla said. Uh, who's fighting tonight? Uh, if you're talking about if there's a fight, I don't know. I used to host and be a big MMA guy myself for a long time, but I don't, I don't keep up on all that anymore. I think at this point it's all rigged to be honest with you. Um, let's see here. Oh, <laughs> Priscilla said my fish are fighting now. That's just brotherly love that they're doing. Which ones are? misbehaving yeah they get angry because i'm not paying attention to them that's that's why they're getting mad because i'm not i'm not paying attention to them they want me to look at them and play with them kevin said it's good for fish it's not for me <laughs> mark said what's wrong with rapashi uh don't even get me started mark don't even get me going um Let's see here. Jeremy, how do I be successful with my one gallon with my Oscar? Uh, you got to put more Oscars in there, Tim. You, that's a problem. They need to be in a group of at least eight or more. So, uh, do you eat Rapashi, Mark? Uh, it's round, so it should be okay, right? More swimming room. Absolutely. Gives them great swimming area.
Yeah, this front house over here. Um, it's hiding out in the corner. I do have to say, Kevin, I'm sorry. Sorry, bro, to say this to you, but I would put up a Severum any day against a full-size grown front osa any day of the week. Um, that dude's just a little baby. <laughs> so if you guys aren't aware, Kevin hooked me up with a front osa, um, which is absolutely a phenomenal. I'm just giving him a hard time, but yeah, he's my little buddy. Uh, the light's off over here right now, so you really can't see, but um, beautiful fish for sure. He's got an entire 90 gallon to himself at this point, uh, besides one lingering uh, long fin, or not long fin, but a zebra danio in there. And uh, yeah, I was using it as a dither, um, but uh, yeah, so I got to get that guy out. But uh, he's doing phenomenally well, uh, slowly introducing food back into his uh, system. Uh, but uh, yeah, he of course wants to eat. Uh, he's out quite a bit during the day. He'll interact if I'm here editing or whatever, if I'm here at the desk, uh, which is pretty cool to see. So uh, I was wanting one of his frontosa for quite some time, um, but uh, he had the honor to actually uh, I disagree wholeheartedly. Um, we, do you want me to try it right now? <laughs> I would never do that. Uh, Severums are too much. The thing is, a Severum wouldn't ever be an instigator and go after. Um, these guys are pretty well trained at this point. I've had them long enough. Um, my my more mature ones. Now, if I put my little younger one here, that might be an instigator and go after that Frontosa. But I think it would be a decent battle at the end of the day. But I had big, big Severums at one point that, of course, passed away through the years. But um, they're one of those fish that can really hold their own. Um, I've seen them just devour some fish that you wouldn't think that they could do that to. However, I think that that other fish had it coming. Uh, they're not ones to really, I find, they're quite peaceful, but they can get quite aggressive. Uh, if they need to protect themselves and I really think that's what I love because that's my my attitude um, It's kind of like the calm before the storm uh, You can be very quiet and calm, but if you need to be in the right time the right environment then you can go ahead and and hold your own but um, Yeah, they're quite a bit bigger right now than this frontosa um, But uh, yeah, I would <laughs> I would never really do that uh, that would make for a great thumbnail and video, though, but I would never do that. So, now this guy is going to stay in his home. Um, even though I'm very confident that I, at this point, that they would, based on their behaviors, if I did a slow introduction, I think that he would get along at this stage. Um, get along fine, uh, but I, I wouldn't chance it. I wouldn't do that. I would be more concerned about these guys in this tank. Um, being very protective of their territory since they've all been together for a lot of years now. Uh, this would be, this is it. I'm not ever adding anything else to this tank behind me besides um, I'm going to do some plants and a little bit more aquascaping in this tank. Um, the, the wood that you see in here right now is not, not permanent the way I'm going to have it scaped. Uh, neither is a substrate. I just haven't put the time into doing anything with this tank at this point. Um, but Hopefully that's something that we can do in the future. Uh, I can do a video on I want to do a nice aquascape in that tank. But, uh, yeah, like I said, right now this other 90 is just strictly de uh, designated to this guy. So uh, he's got a nice big tank there all to himself. Dean said, uh, you never did finish our flight training instructions. If you guys don't know what Dean's talking about, then you haven't been around long enough. And if you do know what Dean's talking about, then I give you guys two thumbs up. Even for the folks that don't know, I still give you two thumbs up. So definitely much love to you guys. But, yeah, that, that goes back quite a few months. Um, my big guy is just about 10 inches. I need a bigger tank, laugh out loud. Yeah, the, the tank never does it justice, does it? I mean... Uh, you can look through a tank glass, but until you actually take that fish out, 
for whatever reason, if you're measuring it or if you need it, yeah, whatever, if you're quarantining, um, yeah, it's like big difference. Uh, how's the saltwater tank? Still giving it a go. Um, the only thing I have in there left, uh, Tim, is the two yellowtail damsels. Unfortunately, I lost my cleaner shrimp. Um, I don't know. It must have got devoured during molting. Um, probably by the uh, snails I have in there, uh, most likely. And then uh, we had pretty drastic change in temperature at one point a few weeks back. So I know I'm pretty certain that's what unfortunately ended up happening uh, with that invert. But I do got some soft coral in there right now. And I got uh, I went ahead and relocated the hard coral back to uh, individual to just go ahead. Um, I was didn't want to chance it. I spent a ton of money on it, but uh, I just said, here you go. Have it. Um, I'm just not a fan at all of uh saltwater tanks i gave it a go um but i can tell you through and through um no um i would much rather have a freshwater aquascape uh just i've been dealing with them for so many years um i now that i personally have owned even though it's a small nano tank uh saltwater tank at least i started out small I probably dropped about four or five hundred dollars on this nano tank. I'm not even kidding you. Um, by the time with corals and just not even including my time and driving there and the all the chemicals and so forth, um, at least four hundred bucks. Um, and uh, yeah, I just don't have any interest at this point. Um, what I'm probably going to end up doing is either auctioning off or doing something with those yellowtail damsels at some point. Um, but uh, or I might just send them. I, I don't know yet what I'm going to do. Um, I just don't really even pay attention to the tank. It just doesn't tickle my fancy like all my other 60, 65 plus aquariums do. Um, I'm just way too consumed with life in general and kids and so many other breeding projects. I just don't have the time to even devote. And corals to me, um, I just they don't look as attracted to me anyways, just purely personal preference, then you could give me a million dollars in coral or a hundred dollars in freshwater plants. I'm going to gravitate all day long to those hundred dollars in freshwater plants or a million dollars in coral. So, um, but yeah. So again, it, it is strictly personal preference, but uh, yeah. Michael uh, Ransom said, I'm currently redoing a 55 and it's uh, stamped for and a stand is for cichlids. I'm looking for some uh, one local to get them from. I'm looking for OB African Peacock Cichlid. If anybody knows of a place um, be in the U.S., um, I used to. I did have an OB Peacock, but I did um, uh, get rid of that guy at the uh, swap meet a few weekends back. Let's see here. Well, you guys, that brings us up on an hour. I um, want to thank you guys very much. Um, if you're not subscribed, make sure you guys smash that subscribe button. Turn on those not notifications. Um, been hearing through the grapevine. Individuals have been having some issues with uh, getting notifications. I know myself, um, I haven't had any particular issues with getting notifications from other people live streaming as long as I'm subscribe obviously to the channel i've actually turned on a notification so that is a recommendation there and just kind of a tip uh to ensure that you are still um on that uh, notification bell i guess you would say on the channel even if you are subscribed something might have happened there logistically within the whole youtube thing that you might have been unnotified for whatever reason but maybe still subscribe hopefully that makes sense check out our website everything's gonna be linked in the description below um Melamoogle just said, I just got my notification. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. This is another impromptu. Uh, we'll try to get back here on a routine. Uh, I don't know what day that's going to look like. Uh, anticipate the next week or two, maybe even three weeks. I'm still going to be doing impromptu. Um, most likely only one a week. This is my second one of the week. I'm just trying to make up for some video um, uh, laziness, I guess you would say there. Um, 
not so much laziness, but really just comes down to time. So uh, with that being said, hopefully you guys make it a blessed rest of your day, night, morning, depending on where you're at. And as always, stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on. Happy fishing. Much love to you guys. And we'll talk to you right back here on the next one.